the Keys Dan Show. It's the Keys Dan Show. I need a new theme for the Keys Dan Show. You might hear news. You might learn stuff. You never know what you're going to get on the Keys Dan Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, what's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, The Keys Dan Show. (laughs) It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Let me say that one more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability. Get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. Yes, the people need to be entertained. Entertaining the people. As you can see on the screen, if you're looking, I'm setting up my my little virtual DJ out there, and it puts my little uh, slideshow to the side there where I can put my advertisements. And yes, you can advertise right there as well. Yes. <laughs> Give me a call, 501-470-6386, and you can be a part of the show. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as I record this on Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time. It is the the weekly roundup, I guess, is, is what I've been doing, I'm holding myself a little bit more accountable. Uh, you know, just uh, gives me a little chance to to chat with the people uh, on Sunday evenings, you know, while you're not doing much, all you're doing is Netflixing and chilling, I guess is one of the things that the people have said, but it's Sunday evening. What else are you going to do? Why not hang out here with me on FB live and be a part of the show. If you put comments in, it's going to show up right there on the, on the comment section up. Yeah. Up in that area. Yeah, and then when I post it up on YouTube, it'll be there forever and ever and ever and ever, or at least till YouTube crashes, which I don't see is going to happen too soon. It's, well, once again, what I have said, this is Keys Dan, and this is the Keys Dan Show. I know uh, I do a lot of podcasts. <laughs> Once you get this microphone in front of me, I just want to talk, 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 talk. I guess I need somebody to hire me out to do commercials and stuff. I have this nice microphone equipment. If if you want me to do a commercial for you, you can give me a call, 501-470-6386, or you can email me, info at radiowhat.com. That would be an easy way to get a hold of me, and maybe I can do a little voice spot for you, a commercial spot for the people. Uh, I want to give a big shout out, first of all, to, uh, let's see, Parker Joshua. I think that man might be more um, busier than I am as far as podcasting and radio stuff. I, I looked at his webpage, Unique Beats with a Z, and uh, he had a lot of things going on. So he, he obviously is a mobile DJ out there in Indiana. And I'm here in Conway, Arkansas, in the Conway, Arkansas area, the central Arkansas area. So if you need some DJ services, I am out there like a bear. <laughs> oh, just ready to, you know, have have mobile DJ equipment and we'll travel. You know, I like to party with the people. Thank you so much for listening and putting up with with my voice and and all the the different things that I like to do vocal wise. I, I know I do a lot of audio podcasts, but lately, as of late, I have learned how to use this video broadcasting equipment. So now if you care to, you could put up with my smiling face and be a part of it that way. Ding. (laughs) I'm fishing for compliments. Compliment me already. (laughs) All right, party people. 6 p.m. in the 6 p.m. hour uh, central time Sunday night. That's when I've been doing the Keys Dan show. Well, I do have some stuff in front of me. And the reason that the background, if you're watching the video portion of the show, the reason that the background is a flag, an American flag, is because today is Flag Day. How about that? (laughs) Flag Day. It's time to rally around, whether it's huge stars and stripes flapping on the porch or just a lapel pin. Find a way to mark a unique day in a unique nation. <laughs> How do you catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on it. Uh, was that? Man, I don't think that was woke. I think I'm, I just made fun of people with speech impediments. 
That's been a joke I've said since probably the second grade. My goodness. <laughs> Wait, uh, how do you top a convertible? You tap on the brake, stupid. Another joke at the expense of people with speech impediments. My apologies. I apologize. Jokes, people. These are jokes. All right. Hey, while, I, while the 4th of July has become an all-around celebration of U.S. life, Flag Day has kept more of a local character with traditions rooted in the township or county, the city or state capital, and much more than for family festivals. It feels right to be celebrating it with your team, club, or class. Every year, millions of people discover their inner Betsy Ross and make their own versions of old glory in everything from stained glass to potato prints, potato prints. I'm going to find out what that is. I'm going to look that up. What is a potato print? <laughs> a potato print. Oh, okay. <laughs> you actually take a potato and you, uh, you make little designs on it and then you use it as a, uh, a printer. You put it in ink and then you print things, a potato print. Okay, I guess you could use that to make a, a flag on Flag Day. Uh, to rows of flowers. Oh, that would take a lot of time if you actually planted flowers in the proper colors uh, for the stars and stripes. My goodness, that would be time-consuming, but uh, maybe totally worth it for the horticulture in you, uh, That uh, the satisfaction of seeing your rows of flowers that look like an American flag. That's pretty cool. All right. You took the time. The men who adopted the first flag way back in 1777 could hardly have imagined it. Three cheers for all things red, white, and blue. Like my shirt. I'm wearing my red, white, and blue shirt. It's got a little, little plaid to it. This date in history, uh, the history.com. Man, I, I dig that that website. There's so much information on there, and I trust the information on history.com. I hope that they don't fail me. Don't fail me. Uh, as far as history.com, the American flag, Congre Congress adopts the stars and stripes. During the American Revolution, the Continental Congress adopts a resolution stating that the flag of the United States be 13 alternate stri stripes, red and white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Uh, the national flag, which became known as the Stars and Stripes, was based on the Grand Union flag, a banner carried by the Continental Army in 1776 that also consists, consisted of 13 red and white stripes. According to the legend, Philadelphia seamstress Betsy Ross designed the new canton for the Stars and Stripes which consisted of a circle of 13 stars and a blue background at the request of General George Washington. Historians have been unable to conclusively prove or disprove this legend. With the entrance of the new states into the United States after independence, new stripes and stars were added to represent new additions to the Union. In 1818, however, Congress enacted a law stipulating that the 13 original stripes be restored and that only stars be added to represent new states. Oh, that's, that, was, that was smart thinking, fellas and, and ladies. Wait, it was probably only fellas back then. There, there probably were no ladies in the Continental Congress back in 1818. Oh, yay, yay. <laughs> On the 14th of June, 1877, the first Flag Day observance was held on the 100th anniversary of the adoption of the Stars and Stripes. As, construct, as instructed by Congress, the U.S. flag was flown from all public buildings across the country. In the years after the first Flag Day, Several states continued to observe the anniversary, and in 1949, Congress officially designated June 14th as Flag Day, a national day of observance. Hooray! <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you know, as I, as I sit here and I, I contemplate things that happen throughout the week, uh, well, last week was a pretty good week. It ended with a bang. I was at the... Rab in Conway, Arkansas, as the 
United States and the world starts to open their economies after this novel COVID coronavirus had us in a tough and a scare, if you will. Uh, they The economies are opening back up. People are starting to venture off into the streets. And I was able to do one of my karaoke shows, one of my DJ shows on Friday night at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. And it looks like that's going to ah, be started back up. I'm very excited about that. So I have one public show uh, throughout the week, uh, Friday night at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. It starts at 8 p.m. and it ends about 1 in the am. So good times, you know, since you've been working hard all week, uh, doing what you do, if you were one of the essential people that never stopped working or if you're just venturing off and doing the things that you do to keep a roof over your heads and keep some money in your pocket and food on your plates, I, I thank you for what you do. Uh, and thank you. And, and you might as well take, uh, spend some time out at a club. And um, we're taking precautions. I mean, we, we do uh, remind people to keep their distance according to guidelines set aside by those scientists that are so much smarter than, than me, for sure. And those scientists are working hard. I am sure they're working right now. I'm sure there's a science right, scientist right now working on either a cure or or at least an immunization of some kind or a vaccine for this novel COVID-19 coronavirus. I'm sure of it. I'm sure right now, as I am speaking, they're doing it. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, smart people. Thank you, scientists out there uh, doing things for us in the world. Well, I do have, you know, if you haven't listened yet, if you want to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Uh, find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. It's pretty easy. I, I made it easy. I've, t- I've taken over that hashtag. I think back in 2015, I did a, a little a little snippet, I guess, uh, with a, a gentleman out here uh, who's a comedian. My goodness, I need to look it up eventually and and remember his name he's a comedian and he was also working at the local planet fitness in conway arkansas and outside he was spinning one of those signs i think they were just opening up the the planet fitness here in town and i I said hey uh let's do a a what makes you famous uh and i've I've been contemplating the podcast and and doing something uh, of the sort before that but 2015 I, i officially use the what makes you famous hashtag yeah and i think i looked it up there was a a few more people that that were out there using that tag maybe a little bit beforehand but i think i've taken it over so yeah look it up hashtag what makes you famous and uh if you want to learn some things with me sometimes i i find some uh, little tidbits of information about something and i want to learn more about it i I do another podcast called what makes you smarter so yeah Hashtag, what makes you smarter? So if you'd like the sound of my voice and you want to hear more about things or you want to learn some stuff like I like to learn some things, follow me. Follow me. Won't you go on the joint journey with me? Won't you join me <laughs> as I butcher words? <laughs> yes, I do that. Um, so many. Th- oh, what? you know, what? one of the things that I've been thinking about, and I, I do look at this other uh, website called the week and one of the the title right now is antifa explained and right now we're going to learn what antifa is i know that it's uh, an anti-fascist movement that uh, really has no leader no real main base as far as i can tell but t- let, let's go with antifa explained and this is uh, the week.com uh, the week staff has has put this together President Trump is blaming a radical leftist group for organizing violent protests and attacks on police. Is this true? Here's everything you need to know. What is Antifa? It's an umbrella movement of leftists and anti-racists rather than an actual group. Antifa, pronounced Antifa, Antifa by some, Antifa by others, (laughs) Uh, so okay uh, the the enunciation would be on the t part antifa or antifa by others adherents see their mission as using a direct action up to and including violence 
to fight fascism and the alt-right. They believe that law enforcement is complicit in white supremacy and that democracy is in danger. The term had its origins in the anti-fascist groups that sprang up in Germany and the UK in the 1930s, and members believe that the Nazis would not have been able to take power in Germany if anti-fascists had fought them aggressively. The first American group to use the term was the Rose City Antifa in Portland, Oregon in 2007. Because there is no leadership, hierarchy, or organized recruitment, anyone can call themselves Antifa. Quote, it's like calling deadheads or Red Sox Nation. End quote. An organization, said Brian Levin, uh, director of the Center for the Study of Hate and and extremism at California State University, San Bernardino. It's unclear how many people identify as Antifa, but it's probably a few thousand at most. It is certain that they make up only a tiny fraction of the hundreds of thousands of Americans who have been demonstrating in more than 100 cities against the killing of George Floyd. Nonetheless, Attorney General William Barr has blamed Antifa and other similar extremist groups for hijacking the protest to instigate violence. Hmm. Let's continue with Antifa. I'm learning something about it right now. Has Antifa been violent in the past? Yeah. Yes. At times, most Antifa activists, says Mark Bray, a history professor and author of Antifa, the anti-fascist handbook, focus on trying to identify the names, addresses, and jobs of white supremacists who are active on the internet and outing them to their employers and the public. It's a lot like, okay, it's a lot of kind of private investigator work that sometimes spills out into the streets with confrontations, Bray said. Still, there have been violent attacks in 2012, militants from anti-racist action, loosely associated with Antifa, stormed a Chicago area, let me say that again, a Chicago area restaurant where a white supremacist group was meeting, attacking with baseball bats and hammers and injuring several people. Five of them pleaded guilty to armed violence. After President Trump's inauguration in 2017, a masked activist punched white nationalist Richard Spencer in the face. In the next, the next month, a group of some 150 masked black-clad activists interrupted what had been a peaceful protest against an appearance by right-wing provocateur Milo, I'm going to butcher his last name, Yinopolos in Berkeley, California throwing fireworks, smashing windows, and hurling rocks. Later that year, Antifa activists battled white supremacists in Charlottesville, Virginia. What happened in Charlottesville? As we continue, let's see. Hundreds of counter-protesters, including some who identify as Antifa, showed up at a Unite the Right White Supremacist rally in August 2017. Witnesses there, including Jewish Christian Jewish and Christian clergy say that there were they were being physically threatened by neo-Nazis wielding semi-automatic rifles, clubs, and torches when Antifa members inserted their own bodies as shields. This fights and May Spring broke out. One neo-Nazi was convicted of homicide when he rammed his car into a crowd, killing protester Heather Heyer, 32. We would have been crushed like cockroaches if we're not for the anarchist and the anti-fascists, said activist and Harvard professor Cornell West. Huh. What about Barr's allegations continuing on in this car, in this article? Oh, there's Parker Joshua. Yeah, I already mentioned you, man. <laughs> you have more podcasts than I do. <laughs> Uh, he's out there on Facebook. If you'd like to give me a call, 501-470-6386, you could be a part of the show. Right now, I'm learning about Antifa and so uh, and and William Barr's uh, allegations. Let's say, what about William Barr's allegations? Internal FBI documents leaked to the Nation Show. 
that the FBI's Washington field has no intelligence indicating Antifa involvement or presence in the D.C. area protest, protests. In other areas, experts say Antifa is simply too small a presence to be a driving force in protests. Witnesses have said they saw both black-clad militant activists who could be Antifa and white supremacist agitators breaking windows and starting fires, but records show that the vast majority of those arrested were from local communities. Many looters, police said, were professional criminals. That's that's what I've thought. I, I, you know, that there's people that are coming in from out of town that are, you know, taking advantage uh, of the opportunities. Uh, oh, let's loot and get some Nikes. Uh, really? Come on, man. We're here to have a peaceful protest. Well, we're here for change. Uh, is that the way to change? Some people would think so. All right, let's uh, find out what uh, President Trump says. And from what I understand, I haven't even looked into it. It's President Trump's birthday. Hey, happy birthday, President Trump. Do good things. Okay. President Trump, ha he's blamed Antifa-led anarchists for violent protests and has vowed to designate Antifa as a terrorist organization. Under U.S. law, however, only foreign actors such as Al-Qaeda, or the Irish Republican Army, can be so defined. Critics have accused Trump and Barr of focusing on Antifa as an excuse to invoke the Insurrection Act, call out the military, and put U.S. soldiers on the streets of American cities. Writing in the New York Times last week, Senator Tom Cotton, here in my state, Republican Arkansas, called for an, quote, overwhelming show of force, end quote, against, quote, cadres of left-wing radicals like Antifa infiltrating protest marches, end quote. Wow, okay, <laughs> that's here in my state. He's, he's for it. He's all for having the, the military come on in and, and uh, blow some stuff up to, uh, to have the, the peace uh, made. Uh, I don't know if they blow stuff up. I don't know what the military does. I, I signed up for the Navy, and, and uh, I got in a motorcycle wreck before I can get in. So and my brother was in the Navy, so, uh, you know, I know the military does good things. But I don't know if they're really built to police the area. That's what, you know, the, the police department and the National Guard are, are there for. All right. It's not like the U.S. Army ha hasn't been used before to uh, help to protect the peace, especially here in the South. Uh, you know, funny that I'm mentioning Tom Cotton from Arkansas, I guess 1957 when the uh, Little Rock Nine wanted to get into Central High School, uh, the Army was deployed to help to facilitate that segregation. And, and then they've been deployed uh, throughout that time, uh, the 50s and 60s, to, to help to segregate the South and make sure that, that we were doing the right thing. Uh, following the letter of the law, segregation, uh, desegregation. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, is Antifa active on social media as we continue? Since Floyd's killing, Twitter and Facebook have taken down what Twitter called hundreds of spammy accounts, many purporting to be Antifa and calling for violence against police or white neighborhoods. Several of those have been traced to the white supremacist groups, Identity Europa, Proud Boys, and American Guard. On Facebook over the past week, rumors of imminent Antifa attacks and riots in small towns and suburbs have put local law enforcement on alert. The attacks never materialized. Quote, I don't think there was any truth to it, end quote, said John Lane, chief of police in East Liverpool, Ohio, who put on extra patrols after a Facebook page attributed to Antifa threatened a suburban riot. Quote, but I think this is going to go on until election day, end quote. Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope this stuff gets straightened out. And, you know, I hope that there's reform and I do hope that, you know, I have hope that there's, uh, that people are going to start to get more peaceful and, and figure out that we're not against each other. Stop being against each other. You know, I'm, we need to th to thrive and survive. We need to be get along with each other, as the great, the late great Rodney King said. Can't, or 
I, I don't know if he's late. I just know Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? And I agree. Now I have to look up whether Rodney King was as alive or dead. Sheesh. Oh, my goodness. I don't like to spout off things that I don't know that are factual, but uh, let's see. Rodney King, American construction worker. No, he did die. June 17, 2012. All right. Well, the late, great Rodney King. Can't we all just get along? As I go along myself on this Facebook Live, on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Sunday, I guess we're getting into the evening. The days are getting longer. Uh, June, uh, I don't even know what day it is. June 14th. That's right. It's flag day. It's June 14th. As, as the days start to get longer and summer is here, the days are hotter for the most part. What's going on in your neck of the woods? You can call me, 501-470-6386, or drop me a comment there. Let me know how you're doing in your neck of the woods, what's happening where you are. The Boogaloo Movement. Now, this is uh, continuing on this article from the week. Uh, the Boogaloo Movement. Boogaloo, which takes its name from the ridiculously titled 1984 movie sequel, Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. One of the greatest films of all time. There, I said it. <laughs> Is loosely organized far right movement that include, includes gun enthusiasts and white supremacists who say they want to trigger a race war that will bring down the U.S. government. Like Antifa, there are no formal leaders or organization, and most of the action seems to take place online. But many Boogaloo followers have appeared at COVID-19 lockdown protests, armed and wearing Hawaiian shirts. And some have now begun showing up at the ongoing protests against police brutality. In recent years, police say they have foiled several domestic terrorist plots by those claiming to follow the ideology. Last week, three ex-military men who police say self-identify as Boogaloo Boys, that's a B-O-I-S, Boogaloo Boys, uh, were arrested on the way to a Las Vegas Black Lives Matter protest with, a full, with full gas cans and Molotov cocktails in their car. Hmm. Well, there's activity on both sides. So it looks like, uh, as I've been saying it once, twice, three times, 20 times, 1,000 times. It's those uh, buckos on the far right and the buckos on the far left that are causing all the problems. Come on down the middle with the rest of us, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Parker Joshua's enjoying the weather here in northern Indiana. From what I understand, when I was, I guess I was a baby, might have been one years old, I was living somewhere in Indiana. I know that there's pictures of my cousins and I in Indiana, somewhere in Green, maybe Greenville, Indiana. Uh, that that seems to be the the city the city name that sticks in my head. So yes, I lived in Indiana when I was a young young boy. But uh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I have pictures of my cousin Charity, who's probably a couple of years older than me, holding me uh, in the in the snow. So yeah, Indiana. I don't like snow. I don't. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time, well, if I ever have spent time north of the Mason-Dixon, which I don't think that I have, I don't spend a lot of time up there. It's too cold up there. It's cold, I tell you. But I'm glad that it's getting closer to summertime, and it's heating up uh, for the most part. Uh, most people are having some good days out there. I hope your day is good. I hope your day went well. I hope your week's going good, reasonably well. Uh, you know, we're... Uh, we're worried about a lot of things. Uh, 2020 was supposed to be the year of clarity. We thought that, oh, everything's going to be great. We're going to be seeing clearly. We're going to be enjoying each other. <laughs> Nothing but corn in Indiana. I find that hard to believe. I believe Indiana has a lot more things to offer than corn. That might be their primary uh, product of choice. Uh, you know, what I find is that Arkansas, the natural state where I have moved migrated to 
uh, from Miami, Florida, from South Florida and the Florida Keys. You know, it, it turned my world from blue down there in South Florida, right next to the ocean, to green here in the natural state of Arkansas. But there's so much, so many things that go on here in Arkansas. It's the only state, as far as I know, that that I, you can actually pan for diamonds. That's pretty cool. And, and there's uh, lots of animals and and there's plenty of waterfalls. There's lots of lots to see in this state. So uh, this this portion of the podcast brought to you by the Arkansas uh, Tourism Bureau. <laughs> but there's lots to see and lots to do here in Arkansas and, and all over this great country of ours. Before we even step out, I know that this is a young country uh, for, for the most part. It's only a couple hundred years old. How many people, you know, people have only been well, white people have only been on this land uh, since, what, the 1600s, uh, I guess? Uh, no, 1492. Well, and, but that, I guess in 1492, he didn't even get to North America, right? Christopher Columbus. See, these are all, this is fuzzy history that comes that spouts out of my mouth when it comes into my head. I need to think about things before I, before I talk. But I know I, ha- I have some talking points here in front of me you know some some history and some things that i find in the news that i want to learn about so i spout them off while i wait for people to jump on and and be a part of the show and you know I, am i begging am i begging you to be here 5014706386 the number is streaming on the uh, it's tickering on the bottom of the video and it's in there in the description so if you want to call, you call. I know on Thursday, I just kind of popped up on a live uh, video and and Madeline called in, little seven-year-old, almost eight. She said she'll be eight real soon. Uh, Madeline called. She was there with her, her dad, Clint. And then uh, Brock Forness, uh, one of my DJ buddies here in town, uh, my man, Brock Forness, called, and, and we talked for a good 40 minutes. My goodness, we had a, we had a podcast in itself. But uh, I do like talking to people. I like picking people's brains. I like knowing what people are thinking, and that's how we get how get how we get to know each other and and solve disputes is meaningful conversation. You know, I get to do these these uh, hour long or or longer. I never put a time limit on them. These uh, hour long conversations, these long form conversations, where I get to delve into people's psyches. I, I know I've been talking to a lot of entertainers, a lot of uh, singers and songwriters and guitarists and even filmmakers on the show and you know if you try to talk to them for a couple of minutes you know it's all sound bites but if you give them a good hour to delve into and and think about things usually that second hour is when things start to get real comfortable and people really open up and you know just let you know what they're thinking it, it's nice to know what other people are thinking this way you know you can't the it, it it bothers me the people that okay you identify as a republican you di- identify as a democrat but now you have to like everything on these sides and it divides us it really does you know if i'm a democrat i have to like everything that democrat ideology likes if i'm a republican i have to like everything that that the republicans are supposed to to, to stand for i have to like it because that's, you know, that's what I am. But I don't think so. I, I think most people are a blend of the two. And really, there shouldn't even be two. There should be several. There should be dozens, you know. And and uh, I, I, <laughs> the, the presidency, uh, for example, and, you know, since it's the, the biggest thing, and yes, I guess, uh, once again, happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday, Mr. President. I'm going to be creepy. Oh, I think that was creepy. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you know, having that job, that is a hard job, my man. That is a hard job, people. It shouldn't even be one person up there. It should be a committee of people being the president. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, people that are smarter than me invented that that constitution and declared that independence and this is how it was put together. In fact, they they said, uh, what are we going to call the guy who's in charge? Uh, let's call him president. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, president. That's something that, like a at a at a meeting. He's the guy that presides over the meeting. Hey, let's call him president. That doesn't mean anything. But since our country got greater and greater and greater, now president of the United States of America means a whole lot. It's a lot of pressure. 
it's a big burden. You see these people, uh, all the men, and now there hasn't been a woman president yet, but they're, you know, all the men that go in, they go in looking, you know, young, youngish, and then they come out looking old and haggard. So the presidency is a hard job, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, more power to you. Uh, just do good things, you know, do good things. Once you get that job, why do you want that job? <laughs> but once you get that job, do good things. Oh, my goodness. Hey, so many things in the news. Let's see. Oh, Dave Chappelle. Did you see Dave Chappelle's newest uh, offering on Netflix? I just finished watching it today. And it's, I mean, it, it really wasn't put together all that well. And it's not polished like Dave Chappelle usually is. You know that, you know, comedians, they usually go to the, the, the little clubs and start working out their, their uh, material before they present it in a, an hour long, uh, comedy special, I guess back in the day it was a half hour comedy special, but now they, ex they're expected to have hour long comedy specials. Well, this one very unrefined. It looked like, I don't even know if he was really working on that material. It's just things that, that you think about kind of like what I'm doing. This is not polished. This is not something that I've worked on for weeks. This is something that, that uh, this is what's, what's going on right now off the top of my head, off the top of my dome. And, you know, I'm not a storyteller like the, well, I, the newly um, awarded Mark Twain award, awarded Dave Chappelle, but the, the paternal wisdom of Dave Chappelle. This is an art article from the week by Matthew Walter, and I'm reading it right now as, as we speak, just kind of thinking about um, the show that I just watched, and it was very thoughtful. Uh, you know, he was thinking about things that were going on in the world over the last couple of months and even more recently with the riots and the protests and huh, just trouble but okay uh, and this is speaking as Matthew Walther I've said it I've said before in this space that I sometimes wonder why profession why we have professional opinion columnists especially when it comes to the subject of American race relations generally rappers football players and reality television stars do a better job of speaking candidly than professional scribblers do. It now occurs to me that comedians deserve a place on the list. Duh. These are the truth sayers of the world. This is me interjecting. Continuing in the article. During the last 20 or so years, from his early stand-up routines, through his glorious but short-lived Comedy Central sketch program, all the way up to a triumphant return to Saturday Night Live after the 2016 election, and his recent comeback specials on Netflix, Dave Chappelle has been among our most insightful commentators on race and certainly the most amusing. This is true, not least because he's willing to speak about things that highbrow opinion columnist of all persuasions will not go near for example the absurd the absurd disparity between how we evaluate the legacy of michael jackson and those of any number of white rock stars about whose crimes we have no doubt whatsoever he tells the truth and does does so with candor wit and a sense of righteous indignation that is never strident or emptily moralistic. I cannot be the only American who has been awaiting Chappelle's response to what, or lack of a better description. Oh, uh, for lack of a better description, I will quote him and refer to as a effing weird time. The killing of George Floyd, the coronavirus pandemic, lockdown, the coming economic depression, in other words, the hideous blur that has been the last few months in response to all of which we need humor so desperately. Now, like I said, I did just watch this special uh, of Dave Chappelle's on Comedy Central. It's it's not uh, really a, a, a comedy special. It's as so much a, a think piece. There is some humor injected because, hey, it's Dave Chappelle. The man's funny. But it, it is a, a think piece. Uh, it, it does make you ponder things that are going on in the world. Uh, it's hard to say whether 846, 
eight minutes, 46 seconds. And that is mentioned in a uh, spoiler that is mentioned in the special. It's hard to say whether 846 Chappelle's new special uploaded to YouTube on Friday morning. I'm sorry, it was on YouTube, not Netflix. I just saw it on YouTube. Um, on Friday morning fulfills this need. Uh, comedian, The comedian himself asked the audience more than once whether they're actually enjoying themselves. He did. He did. He said, uh, am I boring you? Am, am I, you know, am I boring you? And, and people are screaming in the audience, No. So he was saying some some real stuff going on. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Yes, it was uh, on YouTube. So look it up on YouTube. Sorry, Netflix. I have seen so many things on Netflix. It's a blur, I tell you. Uh, let's see. Continuing on in the article. Um, the comedian himself, more than once, enjoying themselves. Speaking only for myself, I was thoroughly entertained, but I would be lying if I said that the main impression I took away from it was one of humor. Yeah. At least in the sense of one generally associates with the stand up with stand up comedy performers. At times it felt more like a sermon. Who are you talking to? What are you signifying that you can kneel on a man's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds and feel like you wouldn't get the wrath of God. It's difficult to do justice to 846 on a family-friendly website. Direct quotation is all but impossible, but suffice it to say that there is material here that will offend conservatives, feminists, CNN viewers, and virtually all persons with superficial notions about good taste. Yeah, the, the article goes on, and you can read it, uh, you know, on the week, and it's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Matthew... Walter, I'm going to give him credit, of course, but I agree. <laughs> I agree. It didn't look like a comedy special for sure. It looked like a, it was a think piece. It was it was a thinker. It made you think about what is going on in this world of ours, in this nation, in our communities. What is going on? And you know, I get that. I get to see that on a smaller scale. I get to have that on a smaller scale. When I I do these one on one interviews, I get to find out what's going on in your neck of the woods. Uh, the the last interview I I just did was yesterday with Abby Kay. She's out there in Seattle, and here our our president has um <laughs> has threatened Seattle uh, with with uh, with brute force uh, to clean up their city, and she is right down the, the street from Seattle. She, she she lives in Seattle, and she's right pretty close to where the violence is, and I know that there's things going on where they've taken over the police de department and, and declared it their own. They kicked the police department out of their own building, so that wasn't a good thing to do. Now, was, was that the right thing to do? Uh, probably not. Probably not, and the president has declared that he's he may use brute force if they can't clean up their own city, is that the right thing to do? I don't know. I'm not that guy. I'm just a little guy here in central Arkansas talking into a microphone, trying to make sense of things. But she, you know, Abby Kay, she said that, that everything is, is pretty peaceful there. As far as she can see, it's not a, a bad town. She's living there and she kind of hopes that the president doesn't send army Navy, Air Force, Marines, officials there into the fine city of Seattle. I've never been there either, but I hear things about it. You know, the coffee drinking, uh, pot smoking, maybe? Yeah, I think so. But uh, coffee drinking and grunge, grunge music. That's what I know about Seattle, I, I guess. <laughs> ah, as I wind down, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I like these. It, it gives me... A, a way to to um, connect with people, uh, you know, on a on a small scale, maybe a slightly bigger scale than than our my one on one on one interviews on the What Makes You Famous podcast. You know, I get to I have a lot of friends on Facebook, and and on, you know, the last video had you know a couple of hundred hits. I guess people watched at least a little bit of it, so the voice is getting out there, and, and it. it yeah, I'd like to have more interaction. I'd like to have more people come and join me. I think uh, Brock on Thursday, Brock Fornes, he joined me 
by accident, quite by accident. He was just checking up on me, making sure that, that the karaoke shows are going well. Cause we, we do work together. We, we, um, you know, help each other out when, uh, when I have too many shows, I'll give him some, when he has too many shows, he gives me some. So if I get double booked, he, he gets my, um, uh, you know, one of my shows. So that's a, it's a good relationship. It's a good symbiotic relationship. We should be helping each other. And I know I say it a lot, people helping people. We need to help each other out. Don't stomp on each other. And I say that as a man of 51, and, and I know I've reflected on my time when I was in my late teens and my early 20s where maybe I did stomp on some people. I, I don't think I did it. I don't, I, I don't think I, I did harm to anyone, but I, I certainly, there was times that I probably could have helped someone and I didn't. I didn't harm them but I didn't help them either. And now uh, I, I guess I've turned that situation around. Now I'm helping people. You know, I, I want people to, to be built up and, and not torn down. I, uh, I like that. I like that. I have the opportunity to help people out. I don't have a lot of cash to throw their ways, but I, I do have this platform that I can chat with folks and build them up. So yeah, do that. And, and, you know, take a listen to some of the stories that, that I've been able to, uh, to, uh, procure and, and have with people. I've, I've been able to have these conversations. One of them, one of the conversations I was just thinking about it. I saw her picture, uh, on the, uh, on my Facebook with Teresa, uh, we went three hours and 45 minutes just chatting on her living room couch with her husband, Phil, uh, sitting there across from us. And he was interjecting and every once in a while, you know, she would say it was back in May and, and he was like, no, it was April. Yeah. You know, he, he would interject, you know, and it was kind of fun. It was real cute, but, uh, they have a lot of knickknacks in their house and it was nice to go and visit with them and, and have a conversation and she's had a, a great life. So, I mean, and there's been a lot of conversations that I've had that have been over three hours long and over two hours long and, those are the best. Those are the ones where, you know, if I, if I really have the time to do a long conversation and I know, I know that, that after that first hour, that's when things start to, that's when things start to really unwind and, and relax and loosen up. That second hour is when the story tell the stories can, can come and oh yeah, Parker, Joshua, and he said, a great show, my friend, I have to run. Catch you next time. Keep up the great work. Yeah, well, you keep up the great work too. I know you're not listening right now, but your uh, your name will live on in this video <laughs> and on this podcast. All right, party people. Well, you know, I, I guess uh, I've spent enough time here chatting on the uh, on the Keys Dan show. It's uh, the six p.m. hour Central Time Sunday evening. I find it on my Facebook. And then you could be a part of the show. I'll probably do this next Sunday night as well. I'll do it on Sunday nights as long as I don't have a show. And um, the shows are starting to come back. I'm very excited about that. The weddings are, are starting to get booked up, the the corporate events, and definitely the, the karaoke video dance party shows. I say video dance parties. I should just say video parties because we're encouraging people not to dance so much because all that dancing is real close to the to the stage where people are singing and they might spit on you and you might get some droplets of something. And, and even if you don't get the, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, you, you might get something else. So maybe the germaphobes had it right, you know, to, to keep away from people, uh, have their wipes with them, have their sanitizer in pocket once they get out of a, a group situation completely sanitize themselves. I know when I get home from a, a long day of work, I, I go and I take a long shower and it feels good to, to get all that grime of the day off of me. And I, I, I like taking showers a lot anyway. So, uh, I mean, that, that's just been a habit of mine, uh, you know, keeping myself clean. And I'm very happy that I'm here in the United States as we celebrate flag day, June 14th, 2020. Cause I know that there's, other people around the world that don't have uh, the luxury of having a bath every day or a shower every day or being able to be clean every day. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess I, well, I mean, I know that the formation, I saw something about the formation of the army was today as well. And I wish I could find that. Uh, 
I know that we adopted the Stars and Stripes this date in history. But, uh, oh, World War, race to victory, forged and beat, shows and premiere. I know there's a lot of things going on, in, and I'm kind of scribbling through, uh, scr- scrubbing through today in history. Well, Congress adopted the Stars and Stripes. I, I heard something about that today was the day that the Army was, was, uh, well, okay. I, I guess the, I, I, I'll wind down as my, as my head exp- <laughs> falls, as all the topics in my head start to fall out of my mouth and uh, the show starts to get really uninteresting. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the show, at least a small part by uh, commenting and, you know, giving a like and maybe pop it in and, and um, you know, giving a view. Uh, once I finish this Facebook live, I make it into a, uh, a podcast, an audio podcast, and I put the video up on YouTube so it'll live out there forever and ever, or at least until podcasts die. Well, I guess that's it for me. Um, this week's shows, make sure you come out to the Rab on Friday night if you're in the Conway, Arkansas area. Come and play with us. Uh, there is limited capacity. I think they're, they're letting in about 60 people. I think that's the a third of the people. I, th- I know phase two is coming up where they're going to be letting in uh, 50% of the people, but I don't see the difference between uh, you know w- phase one and phase two. You still don't have a, a cure for a virus that we know is hurting people. Whether they're whether it's you know killing a lot of people, it's still hurting people, and there's no cure or, or no treatment for it. So having sixty or you know seventy five people in this room, you know what's the difference? Ah, <laughs> you still gotta you gotta be uh, you know be cautious and uh, be be mindful, be vigilant, be mindful of other people. If uh, if wearing a mask to come into your establishment makes you feel better, I'll do it. I got a bandana that I, I have around my neck. I, I keep around my neck when I'm wandering around town. If, if you want me to cover my face, hey, no problem. It, it's not like, you know, I, I don't feel that it's 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 doing any harm one way or the other. If it, if it makes you feel better for me to wear a mask, I wear a mask. And um, I'll, I'll continue to keep washing my hands uh, regularly, which happens all the time anyway. And, um, you know, wash your bodies, people. <laughs> Make sure you keep yourself clean. And uh, get outside. Go get that vitamin D. Go exercise. Go walk around and, and get that good vitamin D. Because uh, from what the experts are, are saying, uh, and, you know, can I quote one specific expert? No. Look it up yourself if you want to. Uh, vitamin D is very good for you in, in preventing diseases and viruses of all kinds. So, yeah. Try some vitamin D. If you can't get out in the sun, if you have an an allergy to the sun, get yourself some supplements. They're pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, Take care of yourselves. And if you can, take care of somebody else too. You know, I have a a family that I take care of. And um, I appreciate them. And I think they appreciate me. Yeah, they appreciate me. They appreciate me. (laughs) It's good to have a family. It really is. I I appreciate them. Well, I'm going to go out and be with my family and watch some shows, probably some of that aforementioned Netflix. Um, hey, keep up with me and, and uh, let me know what you're up to. Give me some fodder to talk about. You know, if you send me an email, I'll probably t- uh, talk about it on the, on the next show, <laughs> on the next Keys Dan show, next Sunday night at 6 p.m. Central Time. I might do it. <laughs> you could be a part of the show. Or better yet, man, give me a call. Find out. You know, let me find out. Uh, I'll pump it. I pipe it through my little uh, mixer here, and your voice will live on forever. And if you have a a, a store that's open, uh, especially one of these little stores that have been struggling over the last few months, if you have a store that's staying open, I encourage you to give me a call and uh, let me promote you. And that, that's one of the man. That's one of the main reasons is I get to promote people on this thing, and, and um, you know, and and. And, and help people up, you know, as you're going up the ladder, help people up. I can't say that enough. I wish I'd have helped more people. And now I'm thankful that I can help more people 
with this platform, with the other platforms that I have, where I get to chat with people and build them up. You know, whatever you do, everyone has a story. I want to hear your story. I like talking to people. Have I drilled that into your head enough? <laughs> I think so. All right. Well, this is Keys Dan with uh, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.